and team back. Radiant team pick. Dire team pick. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to game four between Power Gaming and Faceless. I am Loomless. Joining me is Tsunami, and you guys are watching the Summit 6 C qualifiers. We've been on a hell of a journey, and it could end here. Power Gaming, they need two more wins, but Faceless, they need just one more. They will begin their draft with the Ogre Magi. It seems like Ogre has been the first pick every single one of these games, right? Yes, and he's such a stable hero that I don't really mind seeing it. He fits into any comp, doesn't matter what you want to roll, roll like what role you want to put him as. He just he synergizes with such a wide variety of heroes and doesn't reveal anything that I, I don't mind it being first pick. And I think more importantly for us, it promotes such an aggressive early game roaming playstyle that it never gets boring, right? Like, it comes up to you, hits you a couple times, throws an ignite, it's good times. Yeah, definitely, and I think Kunkka also offers a very similar style of Dota as well. Yep. Needs a, a little bit more in terms of experience before he can start being as irritating as an ogre, but just the fact that you see him kind of in your lane, you're like, well, great. I get hit by a torrent, all things could go south. So, Power Gaming did a pretty good job with the Kunkka in game one. Uh, I, I think that the uh, Kunkka disruptor combo didn't, I guess, it wasn't as irritating as both of us were guessing it might be, but Kunkka himself is still an extremely strong hero. Yep, let's see what do they pair it with. Uh, and, you know, I don't think Kunkka needs a particular pairing, like, you don't need to pick an SD with it. Uh, he's definitely strong on its own. JYC played the game one. I imagine he will be playing again for the seventh game in a row, or is it six? No, there was a Witch Doctor game, so never mind. But there's a lot of Warlock games. We'll get it here once again. Nuts will be playing it. Do you find Nuts's Warlock playstyle or result maybe better than Demons or the other way around? His team was, uh, Nuts's team was able to do more with the Warlock. I feel like Demon's Warlock was a very independent hero. He was just synergizing with himself. He would put Shadow War on a few heroes, he would drop the rock, that kind of stuff. Yep. Faceless, on the other hand, you saw the power of the Fatal Bonds in that tier 3 defense that Power Gaming just got obliterated in. And every single time in the early and mid game, every single time Nuts comes in for a golem, they turn it immediately into a push. And that's the kind of advantage that Warlock can offer if the team you pick around him synergizes that way. Yeah, so we saw the Bloodlust on the Warlock Golem in one of these games, and we're gonna see it again, right? You get that successful gank off with the Rock, like you said, you Bloodlust the, uh, the Golem, and that's just a guaranteed tower. Just so much damage early on. And we'll see if it's gonna be a DDZ Juggernaut, or is it gonna be a Lance Juggernaut? Meanwhile, yeah, we are- equally viable. Yeah. Oh, the one thing that I haven't been mentioning is the first two bands. We kind of just kind of gloss it over, but Undying has been one of the signature heroes for Faceless, and it seems like we won't actually get to see it ever because it's just always banned out against him. And Nyx Assassin is a hero that uh, Ice 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 has been playing a lot as well. Um, overall, Faceless's playstyle is that they generally um, focus a lot on the early game laning stage and a lot of their success comes through from these two heroes so most teams that are going up against them just ban it out it's the wise choice especially when you know that i guess they can completely change the face of the game i'm assuming ice 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 plays the undying um i think it's actually a support undying like it takes the the role oh. of the, the ogre uh, essentially right you just plays very aggressively with your decay and imagine like last game uh, instead of the earth spirit you have the undying and then you pair it off with a very aggressive offlaner like a slaughter that could sprint in and follow up you can imagine how destructive that lane can be yeah and i don't think power gaming has really shown much strength in terms of being able to deal with early aggression it seems that most of the time they're the ones who are being aggressive and they have to play defensively, it's not really in their play style. Yeah, I actually think that they are definitely outside the comfort zone when they are defending. And you can see that when they're defending the tier 3s, for example, they are 
generally in a bad spot because I guess most of the draft uh, puts them in aggressive spot to finish games early on. Uh, but we shall see if this one changes. All right, second phase bans are coming out here. Darkseer and Magnus, a lot of AOE being taken away. I wonder if this is because Power Gaming had a history of combining those heroes with a Kunkka. I have not watched those games, so I can't tell you uh, it's either a yes or no on that one. Either that or Faceless is concerned with strong teamfight heroes. They've been banning out the OD first phase for at least the past two games, and I think, I mean, OD does offer a lot in terms of team fight. Obviously, Magnus and Darkseer do as well. Darkseer doesn't have the most synergy with a Juggernaut, but obviously you put an Ion Shell on any core, any melee core, and they're going to wreak havoc. So, Faceless doesn't seem like they're too intent on the enemy team having a strong team fight comp. They just want the enemy to have a passable team fight comp so that the enemy is willing to participate in team fights, but they'll never have the upper hand in them. You know the hero that's been crazy that we haven't seen today at all is Faceless Void. I think he's banned once. I think when uh, they picked Witch Doctor for nuts, it was a second phase ban. Oh my god, we're gonna see Oracle as well. For the first time in this series. Yeah, that's crazy. Not even like banned, right? It's just constantly available. We are gonna see it here. Um, I wonder. Like I was saying, uh, whenever you had presented the option of Oracle in a previous game, I like seeing him whenever he's synergized with someone who has a heal built in. Okay. And uh, I mentioned Alchemist, I mentioned Life Stealer, and I also mentioned Juggernaut. And the healing ward makes a big difference in terms of. I mean, oftentimes you will see the false promise be put on a hero. But it's not just purifying flames that's bringing them back to full HP. It's usually something else, and in this case, it's going to be the healing ward. So a couple things about Oracle and it, the way that he plays in this game. Um, I think Warlock is quite good against him. Uh, Fatal Bond is not dispellable, at least by purifying flame and, and false promise. So you could dispel the the links and everything, but you still take damage, uh, especially once somebody's false promise, you could just hit the other guys that is linked up. So there's going to be a lot of damage going towards the way of uh, power gaming. And secondly, Oracle plays very poorly against heroes that are in your face all the time. And it feels like Ice 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 always finds two-man crushes minimum. So I imagine Oracle is going to be his uh, number one target. Yeah, and I don't really see too much power of Fate's Edict this game. There isn't very much magic damage to be concerned about, and there isn't really anyone worth disarming quite yet. And the Lifestealer would be worth disarming if he couldn't just rage it off. It's okay in the laning stage. Like, Ogre runs at you, you disarm him, you hit him a couple of times. But yeah, I agree. Overall, in the grand scheme of things, ain't great. Um, yeah. Morphling, what do you think about this? Power gaming going for much of our late game strategy that we've been used to seeing. Yeah, most of their strategies have been hinging on a transition from mid to late game. I, in this game, I don't think Morphling, like, I'm pretty sure he's going to be exclusively late game. I'm pretty sure it's going to be a shotgun Morphling. Okay. Even though it's not the best against Lifestealer, it is very, very good against Warlock, Ogre, and Slardar. Um, eliminating them from the fight makes things much easier. And against Slardar, who is going to be Nakes bombing with Lifestealer, Morphling's pretty good since he's just going to be able to morph right into strength and not be too vulnerable to those kinds of gank attempts. Yeah, Amplified Damage is still quite good against the Morphling, but he'll likely build into a Lincoln Sphere, Mantis Owl, or you know, have some sort of protection. Of course, Oracle can get rid of the uh, Amplified Damage as well. Well, we do see the Axe being banned out here, as Power Gaming still need their offlane. MTR has been silenced in the last game. We need, a we need him to step up, and Jabs playing Invoker. All right, I've seen this man play Invoker once. It was not pretty. It was actually Sunstrike being left, missed left and right. Hopefully, we, we see him play a much better Invoker here today. Or it could be a black Invoker. I'm not saying it's likely, but it could be. It could be. And what, mid life stealer? Doesn't he play Invoker in the safe lane? Yeah, he does, Ooh. but I have seen Black play at mid before, and last pick going to be Omni Knight from Power Gaming, a hero that I'm not seeing too much obvious synergy with, aside from the fact that he can purge off amp damage, make Morphling obviously invulnerable to spell damage, but... Oh, and it is going to be Jab's Invoker, so okay. This uh, this will be interesting. So, offlane Omni Knight? 
Yeah, I guess so. Uh, I don't really think that Kunkka could solo the offlane. They could do 2-1-2. Two, two. Yep, they can. Oracle with the Morphling, Kunkka not really... I mean, sorry. Um, Morphling... Actually, is this going to be DDZ on the Juggernaut mid? So Oracle with the Morphling, Mosin on the Kunkka. So it's not JYC, who's typically the roamer. So yeah, I'm pretty sure this Kunkka might be laning, laning with the Somni Knight. There's a... I mean... Can you say that Omni is actually quite good in the offlane? With Repel, how can Life Slayer Warlock actually kill him? They really can, right? No, they can't. It's, it'll be very, very difficult. The thing is that... Yes... He... Well, he only really needs one point in Repel also, yeah. so... He doesn't even need to change his build up too much. The, the other important thing about him is whether he's gonna get farm, right? Because you don't... I don't know, support Omni Knights technically could get away with a lot of things, but at the same time you want him to have at least a 4 staff or Ghost Scepter to protect himself. Uh, we shall see. He is coming to the bottom lane without purchasing much items. I wonder if he wants to see some items on the other side before making his decision. But possibly the final game here for the C qualifier of Summit 6. We get MTR playing the Omni Knight, uh, JYC on the Oracle, DDZ playing the Mid Juggernaut. We got Lance playing Morphling. And then uh, Mosin finally on that roaming Kunkka. And on Team Faceless from left to right, we got Jabs on the Invoker, we've got Black on the Lifestealer, we've got Nuts on the Warlock for... Is this the third time he's played Warlock, or is this the second time? Third time. He's been on Witch Doctor and Warlock. Oh my god, what's happening? There's a long stun. XY is gonna be playing the Ogre, who is now in a lot of trouble spinning from DDZ. I do believe they oh. will get the first blood. DDZ might die on the way out, though. They send up JYC under the tower. DDZ tanking the tower a little bit. He dies to it. A nice body block coming out from Ice Ice Ice. That tower hitting hard. Sun coming off cooldown. That's gonna be a double for Ice Ice Ice. I'm not exactly sure whether it was worth it um, for the Radiant. Well, let's consult this fight recap. It looks like literally no real change, although Juggernaut did get first blood money, so that's pretty nice. Alright, I need to go offline. People are messaging me, sorry, for the uh, Steam sound. I be. Juggernaut's gonna be heading mid, and he was able to pick up a Quelling Blade with that first blood gold, which is gonna make things a lot easier. Uh, Invoker Sun Striking creeps and doesn't even get the last hit. Okay. Jab's invoker might might be similar to what you were saying he might be. Ah, well, you know, let's not count here. Just on one stun. Top lane, Ice Ice Ice, taking quite a bit of damage. The crush is going to be on two. They want to turn it on JYC. Lance morphing all the way to agility, punching out the right clicks, but... Well, XY does not care. Uh, he will care now, maybe. Uh-oh, JYC is going to go down to a mango stun. They will lose over one for one trade, but I think if you're the Slaughter, you definitely want those trades. In fact, he's sprinting forward. All right. Lance is still level one, so he doesn't have waveform or adaptive strike. Ice 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 isn't too concerned, but man, that is a lot more. I would not have expected there would be five kills before two minutes, but my god, these guys are coming into this game for guns blazing. All right, so this is how you offlane Omni Knight. You go jungle, because the hero sucks. <laughs> Does he have an... Okay, he has an Iron Talon. All mm -hmm. right, well, now I can officially say I've seen it all. You know, in this past week, I've seen carry Omni, mid Omni, offlane Omni, support Omni, and the result has been mixed. It's kind of 50-50. This hero is, I don't know, quite dubious. But the one thing that it does have for this lineup is, look at the amount of heal. You got three heroes like a heal, combined with a Kunkka bolt. If you don't blow people up, I, I feel like power gaming could turn the fight around in long drawn out fights. Yeah, this False Promise definitely has tons of synergy along with it, but I don't really know how much this Oracle will be... I mean, like, they're abandoning the bot lane altogether on Power Gaming. Black, I think he's gotten free farm, like, literally every single game, and this is similar to the other games that we've seen wherever it's just a Warlock and his carry, and Warlock's just gonna be interested in farming the jungle, not really trying to go for any rotations. And then Top lane, Ice Ice Ice, getting x up here, he's gonna get a crush off and just run away yeah so hard just to kill a slaughter in fact he's coming back in he does a five stick charge so really not even close to killing ogre has opted to go mid instead gonna kind of see dz not gonna use an ignite ddz i did not have the mana for a blade fury but it looks like he might be going to pick up his bottle mid yep uh, i think the one game that black didn't get a safe lane farm was, oh god, the courier. The courier's gonna get sniped. Ice, ice, ice is... 
in the tower a bit. Three minutes just hit. Oh, <laughs> the place, the jukes! Wow. Calculated. All right. Uh, uh, I think it's worth missing the ogre kill just for that. Yeah, he's gonna yeah, suicide. Big, big three minute plays and yeah. ogre does suicide. And... Jams has have been having, like, he's burning through a lot of regen, but he's still keeping up in last hits with this DDZ juggernaut. And that's uh, pretty admirable seeing as how he only has uh, two points in Quas, and he's having to sit in Quas the majority of the time with how much hassling DDZ is doing on this invoker. Jams has been getting some help from the Ogre as well, uh, coming in once in a while to throw an Ignite or two. It looks like more action happening on this top lane. They do get a wave on them, and they gotta go back to the tower. Yeah, so I was saying, I think that one game that Black didn't get absolute free farm was when Power went offensive trialing with their PA. Remember, he was getting dove in the tower. Oh uh, yes, stuff. that's correct. Right. But uh, apart from that, yeah, he, he is getting free farm. Looks like a nice regen rune pick up here for the Juggernaut. So when you play mid jug, there's two builds. You either go for the bottle or you skip the bottle. Um, by skipping the bottle, you, you get to accelerate into your damage build much quicker. But uh, if you skip the bottle, then you have sometimes mana issues using Omni Slash at level 6. So some of these players, when they skip the bottle, they pick up Mango. But it looks like we're going to go for the standard build here today. I think it also depends on what kind of matchup you have. Uh, as a mid juggernaut, you're not going to really be contested by... Oh man, nice. Jab's using his Force Spirit to kill his healing ward, but nice micro from DDZ. That cat is just going tour. around. Yeah, so uh, Invoker's not going to contest runes, and right now I think that Power Gang's supports are much stronger at policing the runes than Faceless is, is and DDZ, nah. Go for a blade tree, but not much. I think he was uh, using the blade fairy to force Jabs to walk back as Kunka was nearby to set up a torrent. Fortunately, uh, Ogre has discovered their their antics. Kind of a weird ward. They have Omni Slash available. Torrent will hit. They could Omni this, but they need spin, and they don't have it on cooldown right now. They're gonna just focus and right click on Jabs. Don't think it's gonna work here. Omni Slash. Wow, the lucky bounces. Two bounces on him. Mosin will go down. Everybody spawned up as well. It'll take a lot of damage on way out. DDZ will just port home. Man, that's that such a lucky Omni Slash. You yeah. really, you shouldn't feel confident going for that. But he dived so deep that he didn't really have a choice. Looked out. He would have gone for it sooner, but the creep wave immediately came and met Invoker. But still, a very nice kill. I would gladly trade a support Kunga for a mid Invoker. Yeah. He wanted a, a trip home anyways, out of mana, so it was fine. Uh, we got XY getting the six minute rune. Now we had a lot of action early, but it's been somewhat slowed down. Do you feel like any team had the early game lead based on how the game's going? It was back and forth enough that I think that both teams are still like on even footing. Right now the net worth difference is marginal at best in favor of Faceless, but that's probably because Lifestealer has been free farming the whole time. And... Warfling has been getting contested by Ice 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 a little bit more, and looks like the contesting will continue. Crush, Lance is gonna have to start morphing strength now. Yeah, he's actually playing around with his stats a little bit, makes a replicate of Ice Ice Ice. I think it's actually heavily in favor of uh, Faceless, just from the farm alone. Uh, Morphling, you, you mentioned him not farming too well compared to the Life Slayer. Ice 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 to me is also getting way too much out of his lane. And, you know, going back to the last game, he got a lot once he got his blink online, so I'm worried for power gaming right here. Yeah, it's good. Uh, it's mindful of Ice Ice has to be going more aggressive on this Morphling. As soon as he saw the aggression mid, he knew that he was able to bully this Morphling. And again, this is why I don't like Iron Talon builds, because sometimes you feel committed, and he's going to feel committed to this dive right now. Wait. Oh, he juked him, and he's going to survive. Max Brit, the Sun is going to get a kill. What? Ice, ice, ice! Thank God! Right now, Lance is uh, man fighting against XY. He does have waveform, but the Amplify is doing so much work. Uh, Sunstrike cooling down in 10. They have vision on him for a bit. Surely that's uh, not gonna kill, right? Invoker's Sunstrike does 287 pure damage, so it's not gonna kill. Well, but man, I don't know about that waveform. I thought that he was in vision. Oh man, I kill now. Sunstrike. Sunstrike, not onto the creeps, and that's gonna be a kill. Killing wow. screen on Ice Ice Ice. Is this guy good on the offlane or what? 
This is ridiculous. He recognizes his opening so well. I think he got a bit lucky surviving that gank attempt. And wow, now DDZ going in. Yeah, he's stamped up. And in and fact, Ice 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 in. They don't have Sunstrike available. In fact, he's now X up. Twin's gonna be there, but he runs to the right side, takes a full Omni Slash, but he's so fast. He's actually maxing Sprint. He goes oh back. God. The Sunstrike is available. DDZ dies. Ice 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 lights another one up. He will finally die. Yes, he will finally die. But. So, going ice, back ice, to what ice. I was saying... Styling on these fools. There are some problems with this slaughter. And That's he doesn't what you have get when you leave him alone. I mean, it, it seems that Power Gaming has always been interested in trying to that shut down the mid. Time. There's only so much you can do against an offlane slaughter, because if you're in the lane, he's just gonna play safe. As soon as you leave the lane, all of a sudden your carry's gonna get bullied. Having thrown that many bodies into Ice Ice Ice, giving him this much gold early on, yeah, that's a bit of a problem, and that should not have happened. And You know, oh, they should do Invoker Slaughter more, even if Jabs is not the best Invoker player. And, I mean, maybe I'm just ragging on him. I haven't seen him have a, a good Invoker game. This might be the beginning of one, as he is getting a ton of Sunstrike uh, work done. These Sunstrikes are definitely on point right now, and oh, he's managing to get farm as well. Oh shoot, we're going for more here! Bloodlust to Ice Ice Ice, okay, he turns back. Oh, going forward, What's Lance doesn't want to be there, they got Sunstrike available. It's gonna hit on Lance, but the Rock's gonna be there as a counter kill. Lance will wait for him back, he needs some healing. Ice 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 still thinking about going back in, and MTR comes in with a TP just to make sure they got the heal back to 4 HP. A lot of commitment for both sides here. Especially with the Inferno, Ice 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 still looking to make some plays on the back, but too many heroes behind the tower. That's fine though, this is space creation like mad for Black right now. He's gonna be able to take this tier 1 tower pretty much uncontested because as soon as Power Gaming sends a hero down lot, then Faceless will continue pushing up top. Ooh, top lane, Ice Ice Ice, this Sunstrike, it will hit bang! My Jazz God. on a killing spree. Ice 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 supporting or assisting Might his way up Kunga. there. Yeah, he will. Sunstrike will not be on cooldown, but the Crush will do a lot of damage. No point in Bash, but the right click's doing a ton of work. Yeah! I mean, it's gonna set up the next Sunstrike, right, Jabs? I hope you're watching. I hope you have mana. Hey, the Jukes are coming out. Damage. Okay, no. you see the TP, oh my Ice God. Ice Ice? Oh my God. Does not okay, he's gonna have to die here, right? Omni Slash is up. Oh my um, God. Okay. I mean, you at least force the Omni Slash, so... Tier 3 dive, without even a Tier 1 taken. I am astounded by the power that this Stardar is bringing. This is a nightmare scenario for any support. You hate it when an offlane gets this good of a start, because you're not able to zone them anymore. They zone you now. Yeah, you are not safe in, in your base. Well, I, I don't know exactly what the recovery plan is. I suppose getting Kunkka level 6 is a start. Then maybe you can start killing uh, the Slaughter, especially if he sprinted, but... Uh, we're gonna focus on Black here, for now. See, the problem is Black is also getting a lot of farm. Yeah. And if Black and Ice 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 both get a lot of farm, then that means, combined with their Nakes Bomb, even the Morphling is gonna get blown up. Because I said before, yeah, Morphling can Strength Morph out. But man, he's gonna need False Promise and an Omni Knight Guardian Angel if he's gonna survive Nakes Bombs at this stage. I'm not sure whether they could cast those spells so quickly. Uh, I'm feeling like he might just die. In fact, he waves in. He is a brave man. Oh he gets crushed. The Sunstrike is gonna be there. You can see the healing is trying to keep up, but it's not keeping up enough. Repel has to come through. Uh oh. You know, they can both stay together and get both of them debuffed off. Oh my god, you see that Fatal Bond? Just uh, chained everybody up. And now four heroes up top against for Power Gaming, and Black completely going unchecked in the bot lane. Finished off that tier one, and now it seems like Power might be able to take a turnaround. They got Boat up. Okay, that's gonna hit on Jabs. Not enough first damage. She's gonna try to burst him down, but the, the Rock plus the Fatal Bond. Mosin has a False Promise, but they need some heal on him. Sunstrike, ooh, that's gonna hit. That's good. Meanwhile, Ice 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 uh, did not get the spin off and might be in a little trouble, but no, he's fine. His teammates back him up. He's in the trees. He's okay. Meanwhile, DDZ dies. Lance is gonna get crushed. Ice 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 might just carry this game without Bling Dagger. They are running him down. That's gonna be a full five-man wipes without losing a single person. Killers be damn. We might have this series ended. 3-1 for Faceless. 
It's not over yet, but it's looking damn damn good here for Faceless. Literally the only spell I've been seeing from Jabs. This is like a classic pub invoker as far as I've been seeing, which is just four spirit sunstrike. But that is all you need with the way that Ice 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 is synergizing with these sunstrikes. Every single one of these kills has been on point, and Ice 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 doesn't even... Okay, he just got his Blink Dagger now, which 13 minutes for Blink Dagger, amazing. Being able to be 4, 3, and 7 before you get a Blink Dagger, that's unheard of. Teammate Hank. It looks like Jabs actually went for Midas on the Invoker, so yeah, this is uh, he's basically playing Ancient Apparition right now because he's just going to be farming in the jungle and contributing Sunstrikes whenever this Nakes Bomb chooses to explode on a target. Alright, we got uh, BOT Gold as well. I imagine that's where you go, right? There's no really need to go for anything else. He could go for a Blink Dagger, but I don't think it's necessary. There's yeah. enough initiation on the Slargar that two Blink Daggers is overkill at this point. Alright, Nick's mom, ready to go. Power Gaming might have some inkling of hope that could defend a tier 2. Vance is uh, walking up there, 700 HP, not enough to survive, but... This guy is buying a TP, maybe think of going bottom. Oh, he just wanted a TP. And Mr. Still Lads. See Warfling hanging around. This ward that Warlock just placed down gives a ton of important information for this Nakes Bomb right now, and Ooh, they're gonna go for it. Lance, it's dead. Crush, Sunstrike, and right clicks. Yep. Got enough HP. Maybe they can turn it around and get a kill on this Ogre as this Retribution. Ogre has 1200 HP and 15 armor. <laughs> They're gonna need the Omni Slash All for right. sure. Use the drum charge. XY immediately goes into the side shot. TP? TP? Ooh, they found him. Nice torrent. Omni Slash needs to be committed. Okay. Maybe not here. The spin's gonna be there as well. They exit back. He's stuck in the trees. They get the kill. And uh, looks like nobody was reinforcing him. Instead, they'll take a tier two. We'll take one tier two, and our gaming doesn't even feel strong enough to go for the tier one push. They need to defend this tier two, but it's already almost dead. Ice 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 splits one way, Life Stealer splits the other way. Nice crush. crush! Sun Strike, not gonna be enough to get the kill, and maybe he's in a little bit of trouble. X Torn Bow is gonna go on Jab, Jab, but from battle position, he will pay. And that's actually a lot of net worth going to the side of Dire, and now Nuts trying to TP out. Do they have X? They got nothing. Let me get home. Jabs, jabs, jabs. You don't need to show up to these fights. Everyone knows that. You just need to make your sun strikes happen. They've been happening on point all game long. Don't don't mess with it. It's working. Uh, he wants to play the team game, man. Push it here too with you, the team. That's true. This, I mean, who, who? I'm not gonna object to someone, especially an invoker, wanting to participate. This Lance, on the other hand, he's not gonna be able to participate in anything. He can't even participate in farming the wave. Alright, Slardar. Making another attempt here. Play Lance will just wave back and get away. I guess, uh, better just keep my camera on Slardar now, because he is, uh, the definition of action right now. They want DDZ. DDZ, they got the vision. Oh my god, I don't think he'll make it home anymore. Spin TP, too late. No HP. Nice vision being granted by Jabs and Ice 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 connecting with that stun. And now, now they ping out Rush. Next on the menu. This, this is gonna is be very, a... very quick. Oh, yeah, I, I actually don't know what power, power could do right now. Not a whole lot of anything. Typically in these situations, Morphling is your is your ticket back into the game, but man, this Morphling is so poor right now. He has a lot of last hits, but I, mean, I imagine all of his money has been spent on TPing to the lane over and over and over again because Ice 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 has more farm than him right now. To be fair, he only has three deaths. That's a lot for Morphling, but not a lot for this game, right? Oh, Sunstrike having up top here, JYC. It looks like he was able to port out, but probably will style, die and then Fountain. No, looks like he's okay. No, he uh, started TPing and wasn't able to fall into the predicted path. Oh my god, Kanka. Yeah, spinning from DDZ, and XY, he is so tanky, waveform forward, does not connect, Omni you bet slash. Ice 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 is thinking about coming back in here, they really don't want to use Omni Slash, Ice 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 on the left side here is, mm, okay, we're out. 
that is the second time that exact same thing has happened. Ogre Magi is just... He's a, he's a carrot on the stick, and he's like, come and get me while the rest of my team takes all your towers, and... I mean, both tier 2s are getting pushed by Faceless right now, and... Finally, I think Power Gaming is going to go for their first tier 1 of the game. No, better than no tier 1. To start somewhere. Okay, we're gonna see Ice 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 porting in. I do believe Weissler inside, oh and I do believe MTR is set. Sunstrike onto Lance, they're prepping for the next target. Look at the damage output, they don't have amplified damage on him. Ice Ice Ice, very low mana, he will pop the wand, he will look for the blink crush. Nice stun here by Lance. Uh, blink dagger up back on cooldown. Okay, waits out the spin. And then easy crush. He doesn't have the mana for crush, he needs to wand up. Oh, because he, he has his wand. Oh okay. no, oh. 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 Okay, it's really back and forth. The crush not actually gonna land because they get the kill so fast. And now they go more, they see JYC. JYC's gonna try to. Okay. Not gonna be enough there, but okay. X torn back, healing him up, but I think JYC is still dead to bright flicks. Yeah, there you go. Power Gaming don't own any part of this map now. They're lucky if they're able to set foot anywhere outside of their immediate high ground area because everything is controlled. Jabs, BOT, he's, uh, he's dealing damage as an invoker now. You know, I was just giving him credit for his sun strikes, but by himself, he's got Max Sword, so he's definitely yeah. a potent damage dealer now. All right. Well, well, Morphling finishes Lincolns before this game ends. Oh my gosh. That would be amazing. If that if that manages to happen, then Lance just won emotionally. Okay, well, we shall see. DDZ kills a golem, shows his strength to the uh, to the creep. Oh, I guess actually goes for a dragon lance. He's gonna sit on this perseverance okay. and All right. to tank up a little bit. I think that's the right call. Let's be fair. Lincoln's is not gonna do anything this game, right? Like he's dying to the crushes and the sun strikes. If he's dying at all. Yeah, the amp so. damage is just on top of whatever he's already getting killed by. Faceless, they are vastly ahead. But no point to kind of play a sloppy. They've been playing pretty good Dota. Hope they could kind of seize every opportunity to get. Don't throw away any lead and keep on going. Another next bomb. Let's go. Oh my gosh. Ice 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 picked up a, a Midas. I didn't even catch that. Yeah. Not like he needs anything else, right? Blinks is all he needs. Mm. Some would argue that he doesn't even need the blink. Yeah. Based on how he plays. <laughs> and look at these wards. Right in front of the base. Fortunately, it's somewhat obvious now that these creep waves are in their position. Ooh, got Very him. Baited. Baited by oh. a replica. Oh, she's gonna come in. Oh, Life Slayer is inside. They got X. Oh, the boat wasn't connecting. Them. They really want this kill, but surprise. And now Black's in there. Nice kill bomb helping him out. And the Bukel is gonna be there as well. Black going hard. He still has Aegis, so he doesn't care too much. Okay. They will retreat, but Ice Ice Ice, three man shot again. Fatal Bond on Heroes, Guardian Angel helping things out, but I don't think they care. Uh, they're gonna just go right in the meatball being dropped down. The heals are just not enough to keep it up. Mosin's gonna go down. Black chopping people down, working towards MTR next. MTR will be dead as well. He's healing himself back up, but the life stealer cannot be stopped, will not be stopped. Morphling was the only person alive. No, he's not. He is dead. Team White outside base, and we are gonna see the GG. Congratulations to Faceless. They will be your team representing the C region in Los Angeles. I think most people saw it coming. Faceless were probably the favorites, especially just solely based off the players on the team. The fact that they were able to knock down Power Gaming to the lower bracket in the first place meant that they were definitely familiar with whatever Power Gaming could do. They managed to pull out one game, but in a best of five series, it's uh, 